Hey guys, thank you for stopping by and checking out this short video. I'm Pastor John Cannon from Victory Church in O'Fallon, Illinois. I just have a short thought I want to share with you today. Uh, it comes straight out of Scripture in Genesis chapter 39. It's dealing with the individual of Joseph. Now we all know about Joseph and a lot about his story, but the thought that I have today is in our own personal life, we all struggle with some type of hurt, habit, hang up, if you will, that we're trying to overcome. Some temptation that tempts us and we're trying to get the victory over it. And it seems like sometimes we keep falling into it over and over and over again. We have what's called Celebrate Recovery Group here at our church. And I love Celebrate Recovery. I love everyone that's in that group. Uh, we just had our meeting last night. Uh, so if you're looking for some type of support group, Celebrate Recovery may be for you. But uh, thinking along those lines, I realize that sometimes we put ourselves in situations to where we are right there at the temptation and then we have to live in resistance. What if there was another way for us to live? What if we didn't have to live in resistance at all? What if we lived in avoidance instead of living in resistance? Let me see if I can unpack the story for you and share with you exactly what I'm talking about. Take your Bibles and turn with me, if you will, please, in Genesis chapter 39. And I want to read verses 1 down through verse 19. It's going to be a little bit of reading here, but I want to set the stage about what's going on here in the life of Joseph so that you can see what I'm talking about whenever I talk about living in avoidance versus living in resistance. Genesis 39 verse 1 says, Now Joseph had been taken to Egypt. An Egyptian named Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, and the captain of the guard bought him, bought him as a slave, bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him there. Now the Lord was with Joseph, it says in verse 2, and he became a successful man, serving in the household of his Egyptian master. But when the master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made everything he did successful, Joseph found favor in the master's sight and became his personal attendant. Potiphar also put him in charge of his entire household and he placed all that he owned under his authority. From the time he put him in charge of, the, of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. The Lord's blessing was on all that he owned in his house and in his fields. And he left all that he owned under Joseph's authority. And he did not concern himself with anything except for the food that he ate. Now, Joseph, it says, was well built and handsome. In verse 7, after some time, get this now, Joseph is well built and handsome. He is in charge of everything in Potiphar's house and all of his possessions. It says in verse 7, after some time, his master's wife looked longingly at Joseph and said, sleep with me. Verse 8, but he refused. No, Joseph did the right thing, right? He refused, and he said to his master's wife, Look, my master does not concern himself with anything in his house, and he's put all that he owns under my authority. No one in this house is greater than I am. He has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. So how can I do such a great evil and sin against God? I commend Joseph, right? He did the right thing. He resisted the temptation that Potiphar's wife had put on him to lie with her or lay with her. Verse 10, although she spoke to Joseph, get this phrase, day after day, he refused. Now, this isn't, didn't just happen one time. Day after day, Potiphar's wife would put herself in front of Joseph and try to get him to lay with her or sleep with her. But the Bible says in verse 10 that Joseph did the right thing. He refused to go to bed with her. Now verse 11 is where there's a twist where I think Joseph made a mistake and this is what I want you to see. Verse 11, <clears throat> now one day he went into the house to do his work. Listen to what it says in the latter part of verse 11. And none of the household servants were there. Okay? Joseph is going into the house. There's no one else there except Potiphar's wife. None of the household servants were there, it says. 
In verse 12, she grabbed him by his garment and she said, sleep with me. But leaving his garment in her hand, he escaped and ran outside. And Joseph said, no, 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 no. And he runs, he flees the scene and runs outside, leaving his garment in her hand. Now he did the right thing, resisting temptation. But here we see, it says in verse 13, when she realized that he had left his garment with her and ran outside, she called the household servants and she said, look, she said to them, my husband brought a Hebrew man to us to make fun of us. He came to me so he could sleep with me and I screamed as loud as I could. Verse 15, when he heard me screaming for help, he left his garment with me and ran outside. She put Joseph's garment beside her until the ma her master came home, which is Potiphar. Verse 17, then she told him, Potiphar, the same story. The Hebrew slave you brought to us came to me to make fun of me, but when I screamed for help, he left his garment with me and ran outside. Verse 19, when his master heard the story that his wife told him, these are the things your slave did to me, he was furious. And he had him thrown into prison where the king's prisoners were confined. So Joseph was there in prison. Let me see if I can draw the parallel here between living in avoidance versus living in resistance. Joseph did the right thing, right? He resisted her. But I think he made a mistake in verse number 11. Because scripture tells us in verse 10 that day after day after day, Potiphar's wife was coming to him and wanting him to sleep with her. And Joseph said no. But in verse number 11, Joseph goes to do his duties, goes to work, right? He goes into Potiphar's house, and Scripture says that none of the household servants were there. There was nobody there except Potiphar's wife. To me, I think Joseph made a mistake there. He put himself in a situation where he could be accused of something, whether he did it or not, and then, of course, those accusations are what led to him being thrown into prison because he did not sleep with her. He ran out of the house and she held his garment and told a lie on him because of him refusing to sleep with her. But here's my point. I think in our life, whatever the hurt habit hangups are, whatever the temptations may be, we can choose to live in resistance or we can choose to live in avoidance. Now, here's the deal. If I live in resistance, whatever that temptation is, and I'm living right beside of that temptation, but I'm living in resistance, I'm resisting, I'm resisting, I'm resisting, I'm, I've got willpower, I've got strength, and God help me resist, resist, resist. If I stumble and fall from resistance, I'm going to fall into that temptation. Now, Joseph didn't do that. I'm not saying he did, right? He left the house, and he was falsely accused. Joseph did nothing wrong. Except for when I think he put himself in a situation where he could be falsely accused. So my point is, whatever the temptation is that we're dealing with in our life, we can choose to live in resistance or we can choose to live in avoidance. You see, I think if Joseph would have avoided the house altogether that day, because it says in verse number 11 that he went into the house to do his work, what he was supposed to do. But it also says that none of the household servants were there. If Joseph would have paid attention that none of the household servants were there and removed himself from that situation and completely live in avoidance because he knew that Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with him, she approached him day after day after day, I think he would have been better off, right? The same is true for you and for me. Whatever temptation it is that's there, it doesn't matter what it is. And I'm not going to start naming some of the temptations that may be there. You know what it is that you may struggle with. Whatever that temptation is, I want you to live in avoidance. Because if we fall from avoidance, we now just fall to resistance. And we're still in a safe place until we get back into avoidance. So we can choose to live in avoidance, right? Avoid the situation altogether. Avoid whatever the temptation may be, putting yourself in that environment all together. If we live in resistance and stumble and fall, we fall into sin or we fall into that temptation. However, if we live in avoidance and we stumble and fall, 
now we've just fallen into resistance and we still have a chance to resist that temptation and not fall into sin so my point is where are you today are you living your life in avoidance or are you living your life in resistance i'm praying for you today i want you to get the victory over whatever that temptation may be in your life, whatever that hurt habit and hang up may be in your life. I want you to get the victory, but we've got to start using a little bit of common sense. We must avoid situations that's going to put us to the place where we have to resist that temptation because sometimes we fall into that sin or into that temptation, right? Now, I realize with every temptation, there's a way of escape. Bob has a lot to say about that. I understand all of that, but I'm just talking about living in avoidance. Life is so much easier if you just avoid the situations altogether that lead you into resistance and lead you into temptation, which puts you at the place where the next place you fall is into that sin, right? So I hope you'll start living in avoidance today. Avoid the situations, avoid the circumstances, avoid the objects altogether, right? Remove them out of your possession, get them out of your house, whatever it may be. Avoid, avoid, avoid. Live in avoidance as much as you can and you'll find that you're getting the victory more and more because you're not living right next to the temptation in resistance day after day. Well, I hope this has been a blessing to you and hope you enjoyed this today. Okay, live in avoidance. God bless you guys. Have a great day.